Now that the dust has settled on the NBA offseason, I want to give my thoughts on some moves I felt were underrated. Last season I predicted the Indiana Pacers would be an offensive powerhouse and they had the second best offense in the history of basketball. This season, I think the addition of Klay Thompson will help the already finals bound Mavs reach a new stratosphere offensively. While Klay was the big splash for Dallas, it wasn't their only move, and while you can argue that Derek Jones Jr. is better than Najee Marshall in some aspects, Najee is undoubtedly a better shooter. These slight tweaks combined with the already lethal offensive duo of Kyrie and Luka is to me the perfect storm for this Mavs team to go from a top 10 offensive team to one of the very best in the association. Today I will be discussing the Mavs offseason and why I believe they have improved after being a finals team last season. Let's start with the major move Dallas swung, acquiring all-time shooter Klay Thompson. While Klay is far from his peak self, most notably on the defensive end, he is still a dynamic shooter who I believe has become vastly underrated. Despite a slow start, Clay still managed to shoot nearly 39% from deep on exactly 9 attempts a game last season. While other aspects of his game such as on-ball creation and scoring inside the arc have taken a noticeable dip, Clay remains an elite 3 point shooter to this day. This is also including the fact that I believe the Warriors were asking far too much of him at this point in his career. This is why the Dallas fit is so perfect to me. Clay will no longer be relied upon to be a main source of offense, and he can play mostly off the ball playing off of Kyrie and Luka. Not only will the defensive attention on Kyrie and Luka create easy looks for Clay, but the attention that still must be paid to Clay will open up the game for Kyrie and Luka as well. Combine this with another respectable shooter at the 4 spot and a vertical lob threat for Luka at the 5 at all times, and you have the makings of what I think could be an all-time great offense. My only real concern with the Clay move is the defensive concerns that come with Luka, Kyrie, and Clay all sharing the court. Despite this, you will pretty much always have either Najee Marshall or PJ Washington at the 4, and either Derek Lively or Daniel Gafford at the 5. While you need wing defense, a great defensive big such as a Derek Lively can cover up a lot of those issues, and you will always have at least one of Najee or PJ to guard the other team's best perimeter threat. Klay Thompson has clearly lost a step, however I believe that in a new role where he isn't asked to be a primary source of offense that he can still be a game changing player. This is one of the best pure shooters the game of basketball has ever seen who will now be allowed to operate as just that. Giving one of the most potent offensive duos the game has ever seen, one of the best floor spaces the game has ever seen is lethal and I think the general view of Klay currently has undermined that. While acquiring Klay Thompson was the major move of this Mavs offseason, it wasn't the only one. The Mavs also acquired New Orleans Pelicans wing Najee Marshall, essentially swapping out Derrick Jones Jr. for him. While Derrick was a great piece for Dallas in their finals run, I think there is logic to the Mavs essentially giving Derrick's money to Najee. Najee Marshall was sought after across the league and for good reason. He is a switchable defensive wing who has also become a great 3-point shooter. Through his first three years, Najee shot a measly 28.6% from deep. However, last season he shot nearly 39% at 38.7%. Najee knew that for him to become wanted across the league that he would have to develop one of the most sought after skills, and he did so. He signed a three year $27 million deal with the Mavs, and I think this is a great deal. As a Sixers fan, he was a target I was highly interested in, and I think he fits in perfectly with this Mavs roster. He will also be getting the easiest looks of his life playing off Kyrie, Luka, and Clay. I know Derrick Jones Jr. was loved in Dallas, but I think subbing out athleticism and verticality for more floor spacing could be beneficial. Another move that the Mavs made, in part to allow them space to make the moves I've already talked about, was trading Tim Hardaway Jr. and second rounders to Detroit for Quentin Grimes. To me, this is a perfect salary dump trade because not only did the Mavs open up the space they needed, but they also received a possible rotation piece in return. The 24-year-old Grimes had an off year last season, but he had shown flashes in his time in New York, averaging over 11 points a game on 38.6% shooting from deep in 22-23. He is yet another piece that will benefit from the gravity of Kyrie, Luka, and Clay, and also yet another floor spacer that will open up the game for those three as well. The last move that was made by the Dallas Mavericks was acquiring Spencer Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie was a major piece in the 2022 Western Conference Finals run in Dallas, however I believe he will have very little impact on this team. He can be another ball handler for the Mavs should Kyrie or Luka miss time, but I wouldn't be expecting very much. Dinwiddie has not looked good whatsoever following being traded from Dallas in the Kyrie Irving deal. There could be some hope here in that Dinwiddie is only 31 years old, but as I said, I am 
not expecting much of an impact here. Could he become a contributor again playing off the gravity of the Mavs stars? Maybe, but my expectations are pretty low. Nico Harrison has done a pretty impressive job all things considered. More often than not we see teams fall apart after deep playoff runs for one reason or another and Harrison and the Mavs front office have managed to, in my opinion, improve their roster following a trip to the NBA Finals. This is a nicely constructed roster for the modern NBA as basically everyone outside of your lob threat bigs can shoot the three and shoot it well. Following a season where the Mavs missed the plane and their future appeared somewhat bleak, they have turned it around in a big way and will be a major player in the Western Conference for years to come. As for the pieces that were already here, Luka, I mean come on man, we know what we're getting from Luka, MVP caliber, best in the world caliber, best player on a championship team level, you know we know what Luka's given us, Luka's given us 39 and 9 or 38 and 8 at the very least, you know what I mean? Kyrie, we also know what we're getting, he is getting older but you know he's still shown that he can be highly highly effective. PJ Washington, you know he showed up big time in the playoffs after his acquisition at the deadline. Your center rotation, Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford, great great center rotation, I mean you're going to have one of them on the court at all times and they're both starting caliber. I would look for a leap from Derek Lively, he's still only 20 years old and think about how good he is already. Getting him, I'm not going to lie, the de facto tank quote unquote that the Mavs did for the last couple games at the uh, the end of 22-23 might have saved their franchise. Derek Lively is going to be a highly, highly impactful big for years to come and is still on a rookie deal for three more seasons, which will allow you great flexibility. Maxi Kleba, you know, getting up there, not what he once was, but I think can still be a decent contributor. Dante Exum had a career resurgence last year. Again, he can play as well. Jaden Hardy, I love his game. I'm not sure exactly where he fits in here, but you know, he can definitely go get you a bucket. And the last piece that I guess I'll really go over, Omax prosper haven't really seen much from him yet was a rookie hopefully you know he can get in the rotation maybe be a decent piece and then you have Dwight Powell who you know if, he, if he's playing it's, it's probably not great but yeah with the best in the world level player in Luka a bona fide second star in Kyrie a dynamic floor spacer in Clay, a young big gushing with potential and lively switchable defensive wings in PJ and Najee and another starting caliber big in Gafford the Mavs have constructed a core to both win now and in the future the Western Conference is grueling and will be even more so this upcoming season but I believe the Mavs have put themselves in position to be a top contender to return to the finals in 2024-25 that's gonna wrap this one up if you enjoyed it please like the video sub the channel it does help me out a ton we are on the road to 5k comment down below you know what do you think you know again man i think this has the potential to be an all-time offense you have clay thompson spotting up in the corner off luca and Kyrie. you got to pay attention to all three of them then you have another shooter on the floor and then you have a lob threat for luca i mean man it, it's a you know a beautiful perfect situation for some really really great offense again are there defensive concerns sure but at least you have two rim protecting bigs to cover up pretty much all you can again that's gonna wrap this one up if y'all could like the video sub the channel would really appreciate it, it helps me out a ton and i'll catch you on the next one peace